time when they break the law by faking an airplane accident, these men get to rebrand. And they learn their lesson and just get to keep thriving, or sorry, failing forward. <laughs> this story is so bonkers. I promise you, there's actually a really cool story that I found through this story. And this amazing woman right here, so I'm going to get to her in a bit. Just stick with me here. So just like this Olympian, you get, remember this guy, Ryan Locke, who was like the bad boy of the Rio Olympic and then got drunk and lied about being attacked in very like racist language and totally played on like super racist stereotypes about Brazil. Just got to rebrand by going on Dancing with the Stars, like so many men get to do. And, you know, wifed himself up and now has this whole life and everyone just forgets. They just forget. La la la. Who is on my podcast now? It's it's equally fascinating and enraging how quickly these. I did a whole video on this. Uh, I'll try to remember to link it in the caption. How quickly this man got to rebrand. But this dude, this dude right here. First of all, in this article, I'm going to talk about. They mention nothing of the thing that I'm more concerned about in terms of his beha behavior when he was an Olympian. But now he's like this like attention seeking thrill. Thrill adrenaline junkie guy who like does stuff like this, films himself jumping out of thing for his YouTube channel. Now that he's going to jail for a little bit, just a little bit, for like this massive felony, he wants everyone to know that he's learned his lesson. For anyone who doesn't know what happened, he just got sentenced to six months for obstructing an investigation. The investigation about what? Faking a, um plane crash. Like by that I mean he literally pla crashed a plane and pretended like it was an accident. Audacity of uh white men especially is just fascinating to me. You know what? But this is this experience has been humbling, you know? Um uh, this sentence for me was the right decision. Yeah, I bet because you should have gone to jail a lot longer, bro. You were up against so much more time, but okay. He did all this because he was supposed to sell a wallet on his dumb YouTube channel. So he made up a whole mock accident to try to promote this wallet. Like, this is... Uh, he, he basically lied about this aircraft accident, claiming, you know, it lost power, that's why it crashed. He said he had to, he had to parachute out of the plane because there was no safe landing option. <laughs> Prosecutors were like, no, we don't want any more of you people doing this crap. <laughs> By you people, it's usually white men who have way too much confidence and think that they do never have to suffer any consequences, which they really don't. They never get canceled, but you know. He's going to jail for a little bit of time. Even when he posted this video, I crashed my plane on mm -hmm. I'm just so happy to be alive. Uh, people watching it were like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, why were you wearing a parachute? Who does that? But anyway, just so y'all, in case anyone is not clear, he has learned more about himself because of this criminal case than his entire life experience. So you know what? It was actually a good thing. It was a good thing, y'all. So just forget this ever happened. Let him rebrand and keep making money and failing forward. But you know what? He's excited to continue my positive growth as a person through my six months term in prison. This was a massive learning experience. Like, they all, they all say the same thing. Casey Affleck, this video I literally did this morning. I've learned my lesson. I'll be more sensitive next time. I was unprofessional. It's all the same language. They have the same person writing this crap. New York Times prides itself on, you know, deep dive journalism and being accurate. But what they leave out of a lot of things, especially current events right now, this, they just mention that he was a former um, snowboarder Olympian. This whole thing is about this dude getting in trouble. They leave out one of I the, the most important facts of his history as a bad boy and doing messed up thing. Why did you leave that out? That is so important to this story. It's not related to the plane, but it says a lot about this dude's character. So this is Callan Chifluk Sifsa. I hope I'm saying this right. And this is the person I actually want you to know more about. Because she stood up to that Trevor dude and all the men in the snowboarding world, the Olympic, the professional, like the U.S. American team. She was the whistleblower for the Olympic uh, snowboarding team from the U.S. And the, like, just look at it. So in 2022, she was called by um, Outsports Female Hero of the Year. One of the incredible things about Callan is that not only is she a native Alaskan, an indigenous woman who made it to the Olympics 
as a snowboarder. And anybody who knows anything, I, I, you know, as a former skier and ski, skiing instructor and somebody who worked in the outdoor industry for a long time, it is one of the most, like, elitist worlds. There's very little diversity because of an access problem. Because of it's, you have to have a lot of money to do this. Like, skiing and snowboarding is one of the most expensive sports I have ever tried to do. That's another reason why I quit. You know, how many people can afford a hundred bucks a lift ticket, plus all the gear, the rental, plus flying out to these places if you don't live there? That's why I, I worked um, in Taos and Jackson Hole. And I, could, I couldn't even afford to live in the towns where this is. I slept in an inflatable mattress on the floor. This is where I slept in the wintertime. No running water. I, I, I took a crap uh, in a bucket outside. These towns are with these outdoor sports are so inaccessible to the locals and especially the indigenous people to those areas. So the world has already got so many problems because of like accessibility issues. It's also not welcoming. It's a bro culture. It's a white bro culture. So it makes, it's not surprising to me at all. This very talented snowboarder. For her to get pushed out of how racist and sexist that world is. The only reason why we know how much this dude sucks is he couldn't keep his mouth shut. And he just had to defend the men that she was whistleblowing. So then she came after him, and I love it. Anytime men are defending men being accused, you need to be very scared of those men because those guys who are defending the men being accused are almost always guilty themselves so during the last winter olympics she just could not watch this man and all these people just doing what they're doing without any accountability she called him out on instagram and in classic white woman fashion this woman defended this dude and so did this dude this Lindsay woman was like uh, his Foley's been like a father figure to me. I can't speak high enough of him. Despite the fact that he had ta he, <laughs> he's been accused of taking nude photos of the female athletes on his team. She's like, not that he's a good father figure. What kind of dad did you have? As, <laughs> like, seriously, whenever there's women defending predators, it's usually rooted in some sort of their own trauma or she's just, you know, being racist. One of the two. Or both. So, um, first of all, she came after the coach. He had been the coach for 28 years. And because of her, he is now suspended for 10 years. It wasn't just her. Because she came forward, other women came forward and corroborated her story. Within weeks, weeks of her accusation, this was in the middle of the Olympics she did this. Which I'm like, oh my god, that's such a boss move. They immediately opened an investigation and they suspended him. To understand what a big deal this was, Foley was the most powerful man in all of skiing and snowboarding in the United States when she accused him. Not only did he deny it, all of his little flying monkeys, like this dude, these two, and this man, like, nah. But she also came after this dude. Just to give you an idea of what Foley had done, besides make remarks to her that were super inappropriate when she was a teenager and taking photos of the women, he would say stuff like this when she was 17 whisper that he wanted to put his tongue inside her she said there's way more stories but she's not going to tell all of them. this is horrific this is about this guy how unbelievably racist he was he he used the n-word constantly to threaten her she would complained to the authorities about this to get this man to stop it's not like the dude terrorized her even like fake punched her face like just just pause to read any of this if you want to see it or look it up you know just like trevor Kearney made a mistake with my words. I learned my lesson and I'm a better person now. Back to Trevor. This is some of the stuff Trevor was doing. Constantly making inappropriate remarks around the women, about other women. One of the things that she's been doing is trying to shine a spotlight on how big of a deal racism is in this whole world. I'd argue the entire outdoor world. In fact, there's a really great Instagram page where it highlights people of color in the outdoor world because it is so not an inclusive world. It's not a very safe space for a lot of black, indigenous, and other people of color. Outdoor industry is long overdue for its reckoning with misogyny and racism, and especially anti-blackness. I wrote about the rafting world here, and I wrote about the backpacking world here, and how unsafe camping is for women. It's even worse for black women. This is one of my proudest pieces I've ever written, by the way. This is for the Daily Beat. It's also a very homophobic industry, too. Like, all the isms are in this world. Ableism, all of it. So I don't know about you, but I want to see more stories about women like this, because Callan is far more interesting than this dude. 
this dude or any of these dudes.